Hello. People always ask, what makes high pressure in the fuel tank? Why does my gas tank make noise when I open it? To understand what is the reason for it, we can make an easy experiment. Let's take a plastic bottle with gas. Put it on the sunlight and let's wait what will happen in one hour. After one hour. Take off the lid from the bottle. As we see gas airs were collected in the bottle as temperature got higher. The plastic bottle is swollen, bloated. You hear the noise. The same thing is happening in the gas tank. When the car is stopped outside and weather is hot, fuel got evaporated in the gas tank. This evaporated fuel causes high pressure in the gas tank. Also the reason for the high pressure can be the shaking of the fuel while car is driving. Why does my gas tank make noise when I open it? What is the sound when opening the gas cap? Regulations limit the amount of unburnt hydrocarbons that can be released into the atmosphere, therefore fuel tanks on cars now have to be sealed to stop these emissions. The noise you hear is air rushing into the fuel tank due to the low pressure caused by the use of fuel. You hear the noise. Old cars were producing this pressure in the atmosphere. But after 1995, car fuel system is isolated to avoid evaporated fuel leaking outside. Because of that car manufacturers started using EVIP system. The EVIP system is designed to stop fuel system fumes from leaking directly into the atmosphere. Vent lines from the fuel tank pass vapors to the vapor EVIP canister, where they are trapped and stored until the engine is started. The EVIP system was invented for the ecological reasons. With this system, gas airs aren't leaking in the atmosphere, but instead of that it goes to the car collector and burns with the fuel. Here's the answer for the question. What causes high pressure in the fuel tank? If EVIP system is damaged, then fuel tank will be inflated and there will be high pressure. Possible cause can be a plugged or kinked vent line between the tank and the canister. Second reason can be damaged EVA purge valve. There are many videos on YouTube where you can understand how to check EVA purge valve. Continue watching and we will talk about more interesting subject. What are the effects and symptoms of a bad oxygen sensor and how do you know if your oxygen sensor is bad? In this short video, we will answer interesting question what are the effects and symptoms of a bad oxygen sensor? The oxygen sensor, also known as the O2 sensor, plays a crucial role in monitoring the level of oxygen in a vehicle's exhaust gases. It provides feedback to the engine control module, ECM, to help optimize the air-fuel mixture for combustion. A malfunctioning or bad oxygen sensor can lead to various issues in a vehicle. Here are some effects and symptoms of a bad oxygen sensor. 1. Decreased fuel efficiency. A faulty oxygen sensor can cause the engine to run too rich, excess fuel, or too lean, insufficient fuel, leading to decreased fuel efficiency. 2. Increased emissions. An improperly functioning oxygen sensor may result in higher emissions of pollutants, such as hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide, which can contribute to environmental pollution. 3. Poor engine performance. A bad oxygen sensor can adversely affect engine performance, causing rough idling, stalling, or hesitation during acceleration. 4. Check engine light, CEL, illumination, one of the most common signs of a faulty oxygen sensor is the illumination of the check engine light on the vehicle's dashboard. The ECM detects irregularities in the sensor's signals and triggers the warning light. 5. Failed emissions test in regions with mandatory emissions testing. A malfunctioning oxygen sensor can cause a vehicle to fail the emissions test. 6. Erratic sensor readings. A malfunctioning oxygen sensor may produce erratic or incorrect voltage readings, leading to improper adjustments in the air-fuel mixture. 
7. Dab reduced engine power, in some cases, a bad oxygen sensor can result. In reduced engine power and overall performance. How do you know if your oxygen sensor is bad? Will a bad O2 sensor cause rough idle and loss of engine power? You bet, moreover, you may also notice poor acceleration, engine misfires, and even stalling. Bad oxygen sensors disrupt all kinds of essential engine functions, including engine timing, combustion intervals, and air fuel ratio. Is it okay to drive my car if it has a bad oxygen sensor? We recommend not driving with a bad oxygen sensor as the powertrain isn't running on the correct fuel mixture. Though it may seem fine if the powertrain is running rich and overusing. It's fuel that could start to clog the catalytic converter. Does cleaning an O2 sensor work? A dirty or faulty oxygen sensor is meant to be replaced, not cleaned. The caveat is that if the O2 sensor is simply coated with soot from a temporary rich condition, repairing the rich condition will typically enable the lean, clean exhaust to burn the soot off. However, O2 sensors can become sluggish over time. It's important to note that the symptoms may vary depending on whether the oxygen sensor is lazy, responding too slowly, or dead, not functioning at all. Additionally, other issues in the vehicle systems such as vacuum leaks or problems with the catalytic converter, can sometimes produce similar symptoms. If you suspect a problem with your oxygen sensor, it's advisable to have a qualified mechanic diagnose and address the issue to maintain optimal vehicle performance. Thanks for your attention and please subscribe our channel. In this short video, we will answer some interesting questions. The ESP patent belongs to Bosch. ESP meaning an electronic stability program ESP is a system designed to help counter a loss of traction on the road. Another commonly used term for such systems is escape electronic stability control. What does ESP do in a car? Everything you need to know. Electronic stability program ESP is a recognized safety technology fitted to all vehicles since 2014. The life-saving technology works alongside ABS and TCS to aid the driver in critical driving scenarios such as emergency braking, to correct understeer and or oversteer and prevent an accident. Should I drive with ESP on or off? It's generally recommended to keep the ESP turned on for normal driving situations. However, there are some instances where turning off the ESP may be necessary, such as when driving in deep snow or sand or when trying to rock the vehicle out of a stuck position. Where is the ESP sensor typically located? The electronic stability program ESP sensor is typically mounted somewhere near the center of the vehicle so it can provide the most accurate information. The ESP sensor is a support system that helps the driver in dangerous driving situations. Does ESP affect power? The system reduces engine power or applies the brakes to the spinning wheels. ESP uses sensors to continuously monitor factors such as vehicle speed, steering input, and wheel behavior and provide preventative power and braking when necessary. In cases of hazardous driving situations, for example, emergency braking, by releasing and applying pressure in a very high frequency, the ABS prevents the wheels from locking up and skidding. The escape improves the car's stability automatically applying braking to wheels individually and minimizing loss of control. What is ESP, DDC, VSC, DSTC, DSC, ATTS, VSA? ESP Electronic Stability Program is a term used to describe electronic systems that enhance a vehicle's stability by detecting and reducing skids. However, Different car manufacturers use various terms and acronyms to refer to similar stability control systems. Here are some examples, VDC Vehicle Dynamic Control, used by Nissan and Infiniti. VSC Vehicle Stability Control, commonly used by Toyota and Lexus. DSTC Dynamic Stability and Traction Control, utilized by Volvo. DSC Dynamic Stability Control, employed by BMW. ATTS Active Torque Transfer System, used by Honda, especially in sports models like the Prelude. 
VSA Vehicle Stability Assist, used by Honda and Acura. These systems generally serve similar functions, preventing a vehicle from losing stability in situations where skidding or sliding may occur. They often incorporate technologies such as anti-lock braking system ABS, traction control system TCS, stability control, and others to achieve their goals. The specific terminology used can vary between manufacturers, but the underlying principle of enhancing vehicle stability remains consistent. Thanks for your attention and please subscribe our channel.